Welcome back to Artifacts Tutorial Tuesday. Is this the new season? No, unfortunately not, but I decided to do a special about processing drum sounds. Loud EDM drums in particular. Today's video is about making a big and loud electronic dance music kick drum. I got quite a few people claiming that I wasn't showing how to make a woofer shaking kick drum and a snappy snare drum in my first two videos because I already started with punchy samples. So to change that, I will now go all out and create my own drums through layering and processing and show you my way of doing this. As you can see, I'm also using Ableton Live 9 now, but I'll try to make sure every step can also be done with older versions of Ableton Live. Layering drums is a difficult thing to learn because you need to think about the individual layers in your drum sound and they have to fit each other. You cannot just randomly throw some samples together and hope it will work. So let's get started. First off you can see I have three kick drum samples selected. The first one is a kick with a very solid low end, so I'll be using the low frequencies from this sample. The second one is a kick of which I like the high end a lot more, while the low end sounds very muddy, so I'll be using the high frequencies from this sample. The third is a sample which has a very sharp attack and quite some mid frequencies. I'll be using this sample to make the attack of the kick drum a lot bigger. So altogether this drum would now sound shit, because the frequencies contained in the three samples will be interfering with each other. Time to solo the first sample and throw on an EQ8. As said earlier, I'll be using the low frequencies from this sample. So first I need to set up a low pass filter, or also known as a high cut filter. I now need to find a spot which sounds good, and I still want to keep a little bit of those mid frequencies, so around 1000 Hz sounds pretty good to me. We can always go back at a later point in this video to add some more of these mid frequencies in if we have to. But I think this should be enough, since this drum is going to be put through quite some processing later on in the video. The second sample is the one I'll be using the high frequencies from. So of course we need to put on an EQ8 again. But this time I'll be using a high pass filter, also known as a low cut filter. I also make the curve a bit steeper to create some more harmonics around the cutoff point. With this I boost the actual click in this kick drum sample, which will add a significant boost to the final kick's punch. So now together this drum already sounds pretty full. I'm going to take down the high frequency layer by 1dB to blend it in a bit more since we got a little boost in volume from the EQing I did just now. So now I'm going to bring up the fades on both the first and the second sample by selecting fades in this drop down menu for both tracks. Now I can control the length of both samples independently and thus control the snappiness of the sound. So first I'll make both samples a bit shorter, but be careful to not overdo it, otherwise you'll lose the low end body on your kick drum. After this I can take the fades on the right side of the sample and drag them inwards. This will make a volume fade out. So now both samples are shortened but still punchy and snappy. It's time to start adding in the third sample. First I put an EQ8 on it again, so I can determine which frequencies I'll be using from this sample. So from this sample I want to use the frequency area ranging from the low mids to the high mids, sort of like a bandpass filter. To create this with an EQ, you just set up a low and a high pass filter to isolate a band of frequencies. I also like to boost a bit around the cutoff point to give this layer some more mid-range punch, which will give another boost in the final drum sound. So now I'm going to make this sample as short as possible, 
and then I'll bring up the fades for this track as well. I adjust the fade on the third sample in such a way that only the attack of the sample is left. So now this is the kick drum without that third layer. And this is width. Hear how that adds to the punchiness of the kick drum. Now let's raise the volume of this layer a bit to add even more attack in this kick. These steps are really important if you want to end up with a good sounding kick drum after the processing we're going to do next. The initial snappy sound has to be in the original sample, otherwise there is no use in trying to make it snappy through processing. So now I'm going to record these three layers to one audio file using this fourth audio track. First I need to set the input for this track to resampling, which means it'll record anything that is playing during the recording process. Then I need to click the record arm button on the track I want to record to, turn off loop so we can make a nice recording and press the top record button. So now we have recorded our kick into a single sample and we can start processing this even further, because right now it still sounds like a basic kick drum. So the first thing to do is throw on an EQ8, so we can control the sample's frequency a bit more. If I listen to this kick, I think that the mids became a little bit too powerful. So I'll make a little but wide cut in the mid-range area to clean up the kick a bit. Note that most of the mud will be between 500 and 1000 Hz. So now it's time to really take this kick drum to the next level. To do this I want to introduce a free VST effect called Dominion by Digital Fish Phones. I'll put the link to the download page in the description below this video. Dominion is a signal modeling device to control dynamics and transients and with this I'll show you how to make this drum really shake your eardrums. Dominion starts with the input section to control the input volume. You can really drive the volume high with this, but I'll be staying away from that for now, and I'll be explaining that later. Then you go to the attack section of the plugin. Bring up the attack slider, and hear how much snappier the kick drum becomes. Now you can also change the length of the attack with the length slider to the right of the attack section. Now let's move to the sustain section of Dominion. This controls the tail section of the sound. Let's see what we can do with this to make the drum stand out even more. So, bringing down the sustain slider all the way will result in a very snappy sound, but you lose all the low end weight that is in the tail section of the drum. So I try to keep the changes to this section of the plugin quite small just to bring out the tail a bit more. Now let's move to the middle section of Dominion. This is the saturation part, which introduces a slight distortion to the attack of the sound. I like to add in just a tiny bit to bring out the attack. Too much will make the attack of the sound become muffled, because it basically cuts off everything that goes above 0 dB. Ok, so now I think it's time to adjust the EQ that we placed before Dominion a bit, to control the sound that comes out of Dominion. Let's add in some low frequencies by boosting around 50 to 100 Hz. Be careful to not overdo it, otherwise the kick drum will start to sound muddy. Now let's boost the high mid frequencies a little to bring out the attack even more. Now listen to how this EQ changes the final sound. Sweet! So, let's resample this new kick drum into the fifth audio track, just like we've done earlier. This way you can compare the actual waveforms and see how the changes affect the final sample. Also Dominion adds a little latency into the resampled kick drum, 
so it's wise to open up the sample and adjust the start position a bit. Finally, I select the whole sample and press Ctrl plus J on my keyboard to consolidate it into a new sample and I'll add in a little fade out to make sure the volume drops back to zero at the end of the kick drum. So now our drum has improved quite a lot compared to what we had earlier. But there is more you can do to fatten up this drum sound. I'm going to introduce another free VST plugin, this time by Variety in Sound called Peric TDS. Again you can find the link to the product page in the description below this video. Peric TDS is another transient and dynamics processor with which you can make everything just so much fatter. So on the left of this plugin you can see the dynamics section, which is basically like a simplified compressor where the dynamics knob controls the amount of compression and the recovery knob controls the compressor speed. I must say that I don't really like this dynamics section on drum sounds, so I tend to stay away from it in this video. In the middle you can find a nice classic VU meter for your volume, and next to that is the saturation and limiting section. This limiting section is what I really like a lot about Ferric TDS. When set to 100%, it acts like a solid brick wall limiter. And then you can use the small input knob right here to drive the input into the limiter. This will make the drum amazingly fat. Just watch and listen. So with that we just gained a lot of volume. But I want to show you the difference between the output of Ferric TDS and the kick drum from one step back. I also bring up the mixer view, so I can show you how much the two samples actually differ in volume. So as you can see, the output of the Minion is roughly minus 10 dB, but the output of Ferric TDS is also at roughly minus 10 dB, yet that one sounds so much and much louder. That is the effect of driving the input of Ferric TDS into the limiter to a ridiculous amount, but in the end it still sounds good. and it gives you a much more higher perceived loudness. So finally, I have a second free VST effect by Variety and Sound called Thrill Seeker. And you can find the link in the description below this video. This is basically a simple additive EQ, which can be used to blend in a bit more harmonics or to brighten up or warm up the sound. So from this plugin, I'll only be using the left section, the three frequency bands to control the outcome of Ferric TDS. Note that the Thrill Seeker plugin is added before the Ferric TDS. So now I can bring up the level on the low frequency band to blend in some more low frequencies. Then I adjust the frequency knob until I've found a frequency which sounds best. Around 100Hz sounds best to me. So now I'll do the same for the mid section, adding a tiny bit of mid frequencies around a thousand hertz. And last there is the band called air, which is just another fancy word for high. This band controls the high frequencies and can be used to brighten up the sound. So because of the Thrill Seeker plugin the volume has increased slightly and thus the effect of Ferric TDS became even more drastical. So I like to back down the input setting on the Ferric TDS just a tiny bit, otherwise the drum will sound processed too much and will add um, a pretty bit of nasty distortion. So now I like to add another EQ8 right before the Ferric TDS, just to control the signal a little bit more before it passes through the brick wall limiter. Removing a tiny bit of mids can really work in cleaning out the mud that is in that frequency area.
So now the last thing to do is resampling the final kick drum onto our final audio track at the bottom. So we can start comparing all exported layers. After you've resampled it, always adjust the fade out to make sure the volume drops down to 0 dB at the end of the kick drum. Then I open up the last two exported kick drums and bring both volumes up 10 dB, so it gets easier to compare both waveforms. So you can see that both kick drums follow the same path, but the second one has a much bigger amplitude on the till section, and thus it sounds louder. And finally, here are both kicks, so you can hear the difference yourself. This was it for today's special episode of Tutorial Tuesday, Drum Processing. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you back next week when we dive into making a punchy snare drum. Peace.